Right, so let me announce uh, the next talk. So the next talk, uh, it's an event talk, um, Generic Side Channel Distinguishers, Improvements and Limitations by Nicola Vera and uh, Francois Xavier Standard. And I guess uh, Nicola um, will give uh, a talk, well, I start 15 seconds earlier. Okay. So um, this is some work uh, we did on uh, Generic Side Channel Distinguishers. So, uh, trying to, to improve over the, the existing uh, mutual information analysis. And it led us to, to consider some of the limitations of such distinguishers. So this is something we did in the context, the context of standard DPA attacks used in order to, to evaluate the actual security of physical implementations. So what happens is that during your computation, uh, the device, uh, this is in the context of a known plain text, will the device will use parts of the key uh, in, uh, in its operations, and the intermediate values will depend on only a so small subset of the key bits, usually 8 bits for the AS. And once again, uh, this leads to a leakage because uh, during your computation, you have storage, you have uh, XORs and such, which uh, transpire into the physical world. For example, uh, your leakage value here can be uh, a power, uh, can leak into uh, the power channel or EM radiations. And here you can see, for example, uh, that the, the power consumption will depend on the amming weight. So you have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can try to exploit uh, this dependency in order to recover the key. So how does the adversary does that? He, he, perform, he, he tries the sub-key, so he, he has the, the hypothesis. He predicts what would be computed uh, during the, the cryptographic operation, models how this uh, value leaks, should leak into the, the physical medium, and then tries to relate uh, his predictions to his observations. And there is some kind of dependency test, uh, and the, the key hypothesis that relates best to the actual observations should be the correct one. So the two main ingredients here are the models. So how does uh, the value being computed uh, transpire into the, uh, impacts the, the medium, and then uh, the dependency test between uh, observations and predictions. So uh, for the leakage model, uh, you have two, uh, two adversarial scenarios. Uh, first one is uh, the profile case. So basically it says that uh, the adversary can, before the attack, before the actual attack, control the device and uh, feed it uh, various plain texts and uh, keys. The goal, the, the goal being to, to perform a preliminary estimation of the, the density of the leakages. So after that, you have different uh, kinds of estimations using Gaussian distributions, mixture models, and such. And uh, the other case where the adversary is not so powerful, we just give him a device with uh, a fixed secret key, and he has to try to recover it so what is needed now is uh, he has to perform an assumption on the distribution of the leakages, usually based on his intuition about how the device should leak. So a typical example uh, is the amming weight that I showed before and Caroline used. Uh, but you have some more advanced uh, hypotheses depending on the, the technology. And once you've chosen your leakage model, the second ingredient is uh, choosing the dependency test because uh, different kinds of tests will be able to, to detect uh, more or less complicated uh, scenarios. So for example, a dependency test can uh, use uh, only univariate dependencies such as a Pearson correlation or multivariate. Uh, you can also use, exploit different moments in your distributions, uh, maybe only the mean on the variance or any kind of uh, moments, so skewness and higher moments. And also you can maybe only d detect some specific kinds of dependencies between observations and uh, predictions. So linear dependency, monotonic, or any kind of dependency from a information theoretic uh, point of view. So given all these, uh, these choices, uh, you have a kind of a trade-off be between efficiency and genericity. So for the usual uh, side channel distinguisher, which is a Pearson correlation, 
what you do is uh, you assume a Hamming weight model and you will be able to detect linear dependencies between observations and predictions. So it's not very generic, it's a rather specific case, but it's very efficient because it's univariate, it only estimates means, so it's very fast when the assumptions hold. And you have uh, different trade-offs going all the way to uh, the generic distinguisher uh, best known in the literature, which is the mutual information uh, estimation. And uh, this one is multivariate, and can, it can exploit any moments because it's, it uh, estimates densities for, uh, in a non-parametric way, usually, and it, uh, it detects any kind of dependencies. But, so, it's uh, the end of the, the spectrum from a generic point of view. Now, uh, it has some difficulties because since you have to estimate uh, densities, uh, this is a statistical problem, so usually you have to, to choose some parameters which should uh, relate to how the device leaks, which is not something that you always know. So, for example, if you want to perform a histogram estimation of uh, this density, you have to choose the number of bins and various ways of estimating densities uh, require you to, to set uh, some kind of parameters. And this is sometimes difficult to optimize. So, uh, the questions that we try to answer are, first, uh, is it possible to design a generic side channel distinguisher, which is, well, efficient is better, and uh, also free of parameters, so that you don't have to, to optimize things in order to, to ensure that your attack works. And once you have such a, a generic distinguisher, is it possible to evaluate uh, the resilience of a device uh, experimentally uh, using only non-profiled distinguishers? So our contributions are first, uh, we propose a new distinguisher which is based first on uh, uh, copulas in order to, to reduce the leakage space so that it simplifies the problem of uh, modeliz modelizing the the leakage uh, function, and uh, we use a dimension reduction uh, based on spacings, and in the end we apply a uniformity test which is non-parametric, so we get rid of the pesky parameters. And uh, after that we, we perform some uh, empirical uh, evaluations uh, in order to, to show that this uh, generic test well, first works is efficient, and in the end, we, we tried some advanced scenarios uh, showing that maybe, uh, well, at least in this case, you need uh, to profile, you need to lead profiled attacks in order to, to ensure that your device is secure. So uh, first, uh, this new distinguisher, uh, it consists of three main steps. First, we simplify the leakage space, then we sample uh, a value, uh, a distance between samples which uh, has a specific shape uh, when it's actually uniform, so for a wrong key hypothesis. And in the end, we use this uh, sample distribution in order to, dif to differentiate the correct key from all the wrong hypotheses. So what this looks like is first, uh, so the goal of your uh, side channel attack is to uh, detect when uh, your key hypothesis allows you to separate uh, the pink and the blue distribution. So you try to, to sort them and do something meaningful. And the idea is that for a wrong key hypothesis, you just perform a random sampling. So it shouldn't be different from the marginal distribution. And the statistical issue here is that the marginal distribution can be complicated and hard to model. So what we do is first uh, we project the samples through the empirical cumulant, which has this very nice property that uh, it's easy to estimate, it's just a sorting of the samples. And everything falls back onto a uh, uniform distribution, so very simple distribution. And now, uh, the attack is that if you perform a wrong key hypothesis, uh, your sorting of the samples, depending on your leakage models values, uh, should look like a uniform distribution. And if you have the correct key now, you do something meaningful, which is the only, thing, the only criterion is different from uniform. And, uh, and we sample the distance between uh, samples. And this should behave like uniform, so you have a theoretical distribution on how uh, actually uniform 
uh, values behave. And you can see that uh, for a wrong key hypothesis, they tend to, to behave this way. So, uh, and the nice thing also compared to mutual information is that uh, all samples contribute to this estimation, whereas for mutual information, you need to perform separate estimations uh, depending on the conditional distributions. So once you've done that, uh, this is just a problem of smoothing uh, these densities and comparing them in order to, to look for the distribution which is furthest from uh, the theoretical distribution and this one is, is your uh, correct set key. So no parameters to be set here. It's quite straightforward. And now, uh, in the, when you have more than one dimension, so here, uh, this is an example, uh, it's a masking countermeasures, uh, so that you have only uh, bivariate dependencies that you can exploit uh, to recover the key. And what we do in the first step is a copula reduction, meaning that you apply this cumulant in each dimension independently. And the nice property is that any dependency in the original space is preserved uh, once you, you project. So you have, now you're only working on between zero and one, so it's a regular space, easy to manage. And second step is the same as before. You sample the distance between pairs of samples. And uh, this is where you, you reduce your dim dimension because uh, this distance is just a real value. So it's one dimension. You sample uh, the distribution of this distance for the correct key, for the wrong key. And once again, uh, you see that for the wrong key, it should behave as uniform. So you have a theoretical uh, distribution, which is a dashed green one here, which corresponds to perfectly uniform samples. And the wrong key hypothesis is very close to that. So you can differentiate between key hypotheses and just take the one that diverges most. And this is how you, you perform your side channel attack. So this is nice. But uh, we led some experiments uh, in order to validate uh, this, uh, this distinguisher, uh, ranging from a very simple case uh, using amine weight leakage and uh, onto actual experiments with uh, current technologies such as uh, 65 nanometers. And we try to extrapolate what will happen uh, in next generations. So it's uh, simulations based on uh, what uh, dual rail implementation on 65 nanometers should behave like. So, first, very simple case. So it's a univariate dependency with uh, amine weight leakage, so rather simple. And we compared our distinguisher with uh, the correlation um, coefficient, uh, which is very efficient in this, in this case because it's tuned specifically for this kind of leakages, so we feed it exactly what it needs, and it's very fast. But uh, we see that uh, generic tests, such as uh, mutual information and this, this te the test we propose, uh, also work, which is a first, good first step, uh, but uh, they're uh, less efficient because they're less specific to this particular leakage function. Now, uh, we move on to a slightly more challenging case. So the leakage function is still uh, rather simple, but now uh, the dependencies are bivariate. So uh, correlation and uh, least squares are not applicable as such. You need uh, to use a distinguisher that can exploit uh, multivariate dependencies. So we compared our distinguisher to the mutual information and well, both work, but uh, this new test is more efficient because uh, mainly of the, the way it uh, uses samples uh, in order to, to estimate just one distribution. So it's slightly uh, more efficient in this case than MIA. Plus, uh, there is no parameters to be set, so it's simpler to use. Uh, now we move uh, on to actual measurements taken, taken from a CMOS uh, 65 nanometers. And uh, this kind of technology leaks in a more complex way, so the leakage function is not so, not so easy to, to infer. And uh, we try to feed it with uh, a seven-bit model, which corresponds to the, as close to identity as you can get for an AES. You, can use, you can't use, actually, an 8-bit model. And what happens is here is uh, the attacks don't seem to work. 
So it's not because uh, the device is protected, it's because the leakage model here is too far from the reality. So we had to lead some kind of profiling beforehand in order to, to infer a relevant model. So, and now you see that uh, the attack using a, a relevant model actually work. So the device was not secure, it's just that the leakage model before even the dependency test was hard to infer uh, using just engineering intuition. And uh, now we move on to uh, simulations of dual rate implementation, so a very uh, complicated uh, leakage function which is highly nonlinear. Uh, we see that uh, the usual distinguishers, so correlation and least square regression, don't work at all because they exploit linear dependencies which in this case don't exist. And uh, the generic distinguishers then work as long as the leakage model is relevant. So we can exploit this kind of nonlinear uh, leakages using generic distinguishers. So this is one of the cases where we need uh, generic distinguishers rather than the specific ones. And now an never, uh, even a more complicated case. Uh, so still, uh, we have a nonlinear leakage, but now we, on top of that, we added a masking countermeasure, so it's a bivariate dependency. And even uh, using a relevant model, now the generic distinguishers cannot attack successfully because of the interactions between uh, the two dimensions. So it looks like these attack, attack, uh, non-profiled attacks uh, cannot work, but still the device is not, uh, is not protected because uh, in this case we led also uh, a profiled attack, so it, um, we had uh, to, to profile the, the device beforehand in order to lead it, and it works. So the device is definitely not protected, it's not safe, but uh, in this case, we need profiling in order to, to evaluate its security. So, uh, our conclusions. Uh, first, uh, during a non profile side channel attacks, uh, you have a trade off between efficiency and generosity because uh, if you know that there are some simple dependencies, these are easy to exploit. So, you can lead very fast attacks uh, using, for example, a correlation attacks, but uh, in the case of generic, uh, more complex leakages, you need a generic distinguisher, so we provide a, a new generic test uh, which, remove, uh, which is free of parameters and rather efficient. But uh, for security evaluations, uh, a more safe way of leading the, the evaluation is to do profiling and lead profiled attacks, because uh, whereas dependency tests can be generic, your leakage models so far are not. So you can perform a, an actual evaluation using just a generic test. And this is in line with uh, the evaluation framework for side channels uh, proposed in Eurocube 2009. And now uh, an open question is, uh, in practice, can we achieve these nonlinear leakages? And uh, is the nonlinearity of a leakage function, is it possible to use it as a design criteria? That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so we'll